Hello, it's Philip Cargon. Uh, welcome to Tea with a Druid, number 91. And it's great to be with you. And um, say if you're here and uh, and tell me that you can hear me okay, so I can I can make sure the sound is working. I'm just pressing all the buttons here just to check that all is well. Daniel from Germany, hello. That's great. Fantastic. So, Tim Southampton, Nelly Kelly from Skegness, Hugh from Taiwan again. That's great to see you again. And Kika from Slovakia. I'm starting to recognize all these names now. Kathy from upstate New York. Alma Rose Snyder. Yeah. Hello from Brazil. Florentino. Great. Manawatu. Aidy in New Zealand there. And Athens in Greece, we've got Denia and Michigan and Poland. Fantastic. And people are going to carry on arriving like at any event in the real world, uh, unless you're in Switzerland, in which case everybody's there 10 minutes before you arrive and are sitting quietly waiting. Uh, but anywhere else in the world, uh, people pile in over the coming uh, minutes. Uh, but let's let's begin because many of you actually watch this at another time. And here's what, I, what we've been talking about. Here's, here's a way of looking at what we're doing, I think, is we have, we have ourselves, and then we have our not-selves, the world around us. And we're in this critical time in the story of the planet and of humanity, there are extraordinary stresses that we're subject to. And so one of the issues we're faced with, I think, is we have ourselves here and we have all these stresses and strains that you can imagine pushing on this central circle here. And our task is to remain sane and healthy, uh, to find equanimity, hope, uh, the will to continue to be of use to other people and ourselves. Um, it's more than simply the search for happiness or fulfillment. That used to be the agenda that you could perhaps argue for um, un until, you know, uh, until recently. But, but I think we, we need to slightly change how we see that agenda. Uh, so that we are indeed seeking happiness and fulfillment, uh, spiritual illumination, clarity, and so on. Uh, but also perhaps some sense of purpose and, and value and ability to cope in, in the world. And so what I've suggested a while back was that there are one a suggestion for a solution or a way forward is to look at a trio of supports that we can turn to. And I'm sure we could come up with a number of trios and a list of different things we can turn to. This is just one list. But I think it's, I find it very helpful. And, and this list is uh, connecting with, drawing from a sense of the one source or the source of divine being the source of all creation the source of of being um the inspiration and support i find in spiritual teachings the work of the mystics and sages and philosophers throughout the ages and the support and comfort of a fellowship of like-minded souls fellow travelers on the journey and in a way you could resolve this trio into that of love light and life love being the companionship the importance of community light being the inspiration and illumination we feel we, we receive when we connect with spiritual teachings when we open ourselves to them and then life in the sense of that sense of getting closer to the source of life that we get when we meditate or connect 
in whatever way to our sense of the divine, whether that's uh, with eyes open or with eyes closed in the world of nature, with eyes open in the world of nature, or with eyes eyes closed in our interior world. And you might, some of those of you familiar with, with Buddhism might recognize this trio in the, the refuges of Buddhism, uh, the three refuges. Uh, and I think that these, these three sources of support can be hugely valuable. And so what we've done over the last few weeks is we've uh, looked uh, in one evening on, uh, there are little exploding colors going on on the screen. That's lovely, whoever sent those. Um, and uh, so, so uh, this is a funny thing, isn't it? The people who invent these things, little bubbles going up the screen. Um, yes, yeah, so we've looked at the, at the power of community and, and we've, we've held hands in the, in the circle together, you know, all across the world from Belgium to Dordrecht to Cambridge to Toronto to Poland to um, all over the place and New Zealand and so on. And we've, we've felt the, the connection with community. And we've opened to the value and the power of teaching. And so this, this week I wanted to talk about the idea of the one source. And Druidry provides an interesting angle on this, which is uh, the one source can sometimes be represented as either the the grail chalice or the cauldron uh, the symbol of the grail but uh, from a deeper more primal level the cauldron and in the old stories the cauldron uh, never ran dry it, it always provided food it was a sort of magical thing you remember the stories of the grail where the grail lands in the grail chapel and provides every night around the round table with a whatever food they require, uh, which are interpreted sort of rationally as a completely bonkers idea of a, of a cup arriving and giving one person a hamburger and another person a pile of chips or something like that. But of course, it's not meant to be taken literally. It's symbolic that the grail represents the source and it's this feminine symbol. So the goddess at that level. And, and, the, and the cauldron in the old stories was a perpetual source of, of food and in this tradition, it's said that when you connect with the grail, if you're a storyteller, your supply of stories never runs out. Connect with this primal story of the grail, of the cauldron, and you will have an endless flow of stories that come to your lips. And there's this huge secret in there, this jewel uh, contained in this idea. The salmon is another powerful symbol in Druidry and we, we are urged to follow the salmon uh, in the Druid tradition. And of course the salmon returns to its spawning grounds and it goes upstream against the current. So you could get an analogy there with the current of life that wants us to be engaged with chasing money and worrying about politics and worrying about climate change and 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 not that we shouldn't do these things of course it's important please don't think i'm suggesting a kind of uh, denial of the world but the current of, of 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 popular opinion drags us away from the still center and what the story of the salmon is telling us is it's bringing us back, bringing us back to the center, the still point. And so in thinking about this theme um, this afternoon uh, and thinking about this idea of going back to the source, I googled um, the sources of rivers. I just wanted to look at a lot of pictures of the sources of rivers and I got straight to an article that was entitled The Humble Sources of Ten Major Rivers. And there's a little piece on you know, the source of the Ganges and the Thames and, and uh, the Danube and so on. And of course, the sources of these mighty rivers are tiny. They're little pools, the rocks with a bit of water dripping from them. Um, 
a glacier that's just dripping in the Gangot tree, the source of the Ganges up high up in the Himalayas. And for me, that was powerful to see. It reminded me of how in the Druid tradition, we take the bird as the totem of the Druid is the wren, this tiniest of birds, not the eagle, not something big, but something tiny, very humble. And the, the Druids in Welsh, the Druid's house is the name for the little nest that the wren, wren makes and he sits inside this tiny little house. So that's symbolic of smallness is symbolic of, of humility and lack of grandiosity and an appreciation of how to really make progress. We need not to puff ourselves up, but on the contrary, to, to reduce ourselves like the finest of sources, you know, this reduction in cooking is um is a good thing it just tastes better and better the more you reduce a source that's what we want to do with our souls we don't want to puff it up uh, we don't want to souffle we want a, a reduced source and uh so we're going to go to another kind of source uh uh in our meditation uh i thought let's have our meditation let's call it meditation to the humble source the source of the river so, so if you're ready, let me just take a, a sip. And I think just finally to stress, because I think it's important that, that to make it crystal clear that all this work, I think, often spirituality can be used uh, either for denial or for kind of running away from the difficult challenges that life confronts us with either personally in terms of our relationships or of difficulties we need to <coughs> excuse me <coughs> we need to overcome or on a wider level with the challenges that the, the 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 social and political and environmental worlds confront us with and all these broadcasts, as far as I'm concerned, and these discussions, meditations we're having, <clears throat> are not designed to foster that kind of retreat from the world, but quite the opposite. They actually are designed to foster our ability to engage more deeply with these challenges. On the understanding that our ability to engage successfully, productively, creatively, helpfully with challenges is dependent upon a degree of mental health, physical health, energy, clarity, and I believe to a connection to source, to the divine. So this isn't a call to, uh, to, to uh, escape but to engage so let's uh let's now go deep inside and uh take a meditation to the humble source this is just going to be a few minutes where we just reconnect with our sense of the source our sense of the knowledge of the divine and, and i use the term knowledge in the sense of um both an outer and an inner experience. If I have knowledge of, say I have knowledge of a person, uh, this means that I might know a good deal about their character, what they've achieved in life, a sense of who they are and, and, and what they do and so on. Um, it also will, it can mean, I think, in the, in the biblical sense of the term, he, he, he knew that woman. Uh, knowledge is used in the terms of physical intimacy but it doesn't have to be uh, that intimate, of course, but there's a sense of, do, you know, if I say, do you, do you know um, John? Yes, yes, I know him. And by that, you mean you don't know of him by reading about him. You know him. You actually are a friend of the, you've, you've been in contact with him. So that's what I mean by knowledge of the divine. You might have read a great deal and 
uh, feel you have some kind of grasp on an understanding of what the one source of all being is, what God is, what God, what the source is. But what I mean by knowledge is also a familiarity, an experience of that one source that you may have had through meditation, through spiritual experiences, through dreams, through, through your life. And, and, and this is what we're hoping to connect with this in this meditation. So let's just take a moment to probably close our eyes so that we feel more comfortable uh, and less distracted. And being aware of being seated in front of our screens, we can also just gently let go of that awareness whilst becoming aware of being in a beautiful spot in the country. Close to nature, Druids like to imagine that they're in clearings in the forest because they worship trees and they love trees. They like to be close to trees, but they also like to see the sky and feel open to the energy of the sky and the stars and the sun and moon. So a clearing in the forest gives us both that sense of openness and that sense of closeness and intimacy with the trees. So if you like, you can imagine you're in this sacred grove or clearing of the Druids. With the sky above you, the trees around you, and the earth beneath you. And you become aware of the earth and you feel its stability. And as you breathe out, you can just let all your troubles and concerns just drift into the earth. As you breathe in, you can breathe in the stability and strength of the earth and the energy that the earth exudes. You might be able to smell the earth. And you become aware of the trees around you. You sense them firmly anchored in the earth. You sense their protection and their power. And you breathe in the scent of the trees. And you become aware of the sky. You sense the blue sky above you. You breathe in the energy of the sky. And you breathe in the vitality of the element of air. And you feel how this vitality, this energy of the sky meets the energy of the earth within the center of your being. And you notice that you can hear the sound of water moving. And you might open your inner eyes, your psychic eyes in the grove. Or you may just sense that there's a little stream just a little way away from the clearing. And you feel this urge to follow this stream back up to its source. And so you find that there's a path to this stream. And you just move effortlessly along the path, getting closer to the stream's edge until you see the sunlight reflected in the water. You see the water flowing down. And you see that the path leads alongside the stream. And you start to follow it upwards. And it's going up through the woods, the trees gradually clearing, thinning, as you start to get above the tree line. And the stream is getting smaller you can feel that you're coming to the source of the stream. 
And the sound of the water running gets gentler and softer. And you can feel a beautiful kind of energy as you approach the source of the stream. It's so subtle and so delicate. And so you approach gently as you see the beginning of this stream rock stripping a tiny pool knowing that this is the beginning of this stream that eventually runs into a great river which runs into the sea but now you're here at its source and you tune in to the source of this stream and you can sense the spirit of the source and you feel the blessing of the spirit of the source of the stream and if it feels right you just dip your fingers in the source and just touch the cool water to your forehead to your brow to feel blessed Do you feel blessed by the spirit of the stream? And now again, if it feels right, you might like to drink from this. Just dip your hands in the water, crystal clear. And just imagine that you're drinking from it. And allow your feeling of the water to run through your energy body, your subtle body and feeling that freshness and that clarity you might like to lie down now beside the source of the stream and just take a few moments just to gently be in this place. No need for thoughts or words. Just being in the silence for a while. Allowing the energy of this place to flow through you. And deep down you may well feel that this is all you need to come to a place like this, to just breathe, to let go, to allow the energy of the source to flow through you. to connect at the deepest level of your being with the source of all life. And you may feel how your energy field is filled with a sense of freshness and clarity. 
and you know that you can return to this place at any time should you wish and you give thanks to the spirit of this stream to the source of the stream you touch your palms of your hands to the ground sending your love to this place and then you lift your palms to your heart feeling the love in your heart too and then you take your leave and you travel back to the sacred grove beside the stream down the pathway coming back to the clearing finding your place sensing the earth beneath you the trees around you and the sky above you and you breathe in deeply and you feel the energy of the sky meeting the energy of the earth within the center of your being and feeling centered and grounded fully present here and now you will allow the awareness of being in the sacred grove to fade as you become aware of being seated in front of your screen fully present here and now and when you feel ready you open your eyes So there, just a short meditation to the source. And I hope you enjoyed it. It's made me feel so peaceful. I don't know what to say, um, except have a lovely week. And um, I hope this presentation of these three ways in which we can resource ourselves find equanimity and calm within ourselves can be of help and i look forward to as lorna park says it's so lovely to see people from so many different places on one earth one earth um yeah so i shall go and make some tea and um I'm lovely reading. I'm really enjoying reading your comments, but I'll do that with a cup of tea and many, many blessings. And um, see you next week. And have a wonderful, wonderful week. And uh, lots of love. Okay. Bye.